Free speech is a <clears throat> great idea, but we're in a war. Now, under Sharia law, it is forbidden to preach Christianity to a Muslim. But, Madam Speaker, these discriminatory arrests against Christians did not occur in a Muslim country. They occurred in Dearborn, Michigan. From what we see in the United States right now, the First Amendment is not protecting you. It becomes very interesting when you know, the fact that you come out and uh, you give a, an objective assessment of something that all of a sudden someone can classify it as hate speech. Freedom of speech is our insurance policy to make sure that we are free. The minute you talk about striking a balance, drawing a line, you're basically licensing state commissars to criminalize opinion. And we know the name for societies that do that. I became the first person in the free world charged with hate speech for showing the news. Who decides what's hate speech? So are people being jailed in Europe now for presenting their, their, their point of view. That needs to be out to the public so that they know what's going on in Europe and they know what might be the future of the states. It is questions about Islam that get transposed into hate speech and then you get dragged into court with potential jail sentences. I don't think that if you close your border then you solve this problem because the enemy is in the border. The media has been silenced, so they're not writing about it. I think anybody who speaks out uh, on this issue is in danger. Backstage, I was talking to the guy from CBS. We were going through the CBS uh, life insurance policy <laughs> to see if I was covered for jihad. Oh. It is a strand within Islam which is highly political with intent to conquer. Yes, we still have 75% of the Muslim community worldwide that are moderate Muslims who just want to live in peace, do not want to strap bombs on their bodies. But it is the radicals are driving the agenda. Whoever insults Islam deserves capital punishment. We are in a holy war, uh, not of our making, there are two civil wars taking place. One is between Muslims over the nature of Islam and what it means to be a Muslim. And there's another over Westerners, whether what we have is something worth defending and be fighting for, or whether you just shrug and say it's an accident of history and we can move on from there. It's the most serious threat, probably, that the planet faces at the moment. In the United States government, it's forbidden to say uh, Islamic terrorism, jihad, I consider it part of my responsibility as President of the United States to fight against negative stereotypes of Islam wherever they appear. This constriction of freedom of speech is now becoming official policy. If you abolish free speech, you will cement the present order, it will become unchangeable, and you will regress. So it stops all progress. It will eliminate democracy, it will eliminate freedom, it will enslave women and eventually men. It will put us back to uh, conditions that we have hardly ever known in the Western world. I'm in danger. You're in danger. Everybody's in danger. As always in a democracy, the only response to this lies in the hands of the people.